Welcome to this video where I'm going to describe how to create a lose screen in your game. This does not have to be a 2D game at all. All the steps really apply to 3D as well. I'm just using a 2D example. So let's get started. While there are many different ways to create a lose screen, I'm going to show the simplest way as well as um, the, an easier way because it involves less steps. So my plan is to create a new scene. Another way that I'll just briefly gloss over that um, another way you can create a loose screen is kind of I'll show you the win screen I have right now. And so the idea is that you have you win and a play again or in this case you might want a you lose and play again. Now the only thing with this is that you might be a little distracted with the fact that you have to disable different things. For example, if you don't want your player moving, and I'll show you right now what I mean by this. So even when this you win is gone, or in this case, a you lose, you'd have to disable your player from being able to, let's say, collect coins from walking and from jumping. So it's just easier to create a new scene. Stylistically, if you want, you can create uh, a kind of screen, a kind of pop-up like this for your lose screen, but it's just easier to create an entirely new scene. So if you haven't already, go ahead and do that now. Right click, create scene. You can name it whatever you want. Just be careful that if it's one or two words, sometimes it gives you names. Definitely for scripts, make sure to name it one word. In this case, we have lose screen. I'm going to open that up. Save this if you haven't right. First step is creating a canvas. We're creating a canvas because we have UI and that's going to be our game over text, you lose text, and then our button. So you can do that if you haven't already by again right clicking, going down to UI, and selecting canvas. Now when you create this text and this button, you're doing it while you're selecting canvas. Before we do that though, make sure to change your canvas from constant pixel size to scale with screen size. And when we create our text, again, canvas is selected, and then we're going to do that, and our button. So I've already done that here. I created this text, changed it to game over, increased the size, centered it, and then make sure to select horizontal overflow and vertical overflow, just because sometimes um, if you don't do that, you can say, where did my text go? And then you can, of course, modify that to your liking, but... Part of the reason might be because of one of these so if you don't see your text that could be why also the size and then i created this button now we want this button to reload our scene so it's up to you whether you want to reload um so i have a start scene in this game which looks like this so it's up to you whether you want to reload the start scene or you want to go directly to the game so that's your choice but in any case we're going to create a new script you can do that by right clicking, create, going up to C sharp script. I already created mine and it's called retry game. And we're gonna do this to explain what exactly we want to happen. Here's our new script. And before we begin, make sure to add this line. And I'll show you exactly what happens when we don't have this line. So if we comment this out, it's essentially as if it's not here. And we can see that we have a red squiggly line. So what is this? What is this? Now this is a method that we're creating and make sure it's public because if it's not public then you won't be able to find it later. So public load game is the name I created this method. You can choose whatever name you want and this is what we want to happen when our button is clicked. So we want to load the scene and then so if we look you can load either main menu or game level. So if you prefer game level you can do that and inside you say game level. Bam. But if you look, whoa, what's that red squiggly line doing there? Well, that's because we don't have this line. So this line four is crucial. Make sure to save your script. And then now, great, we have this load scene and it's ready to go. But we need to add our script to the button. So you can add the script to the button or the canvas. So now we need to tell the button what to do when it's clicked. So first we're going to add our retry game script to the button so that we're saying, hey, look at this button to do whatever we want. So we're going to add object. Again, we just add the script to the button. So that's where it's going to look for it. The script called retry game and then that public method we created load game. So if you didn't create it as public, you wouldn't be able to find that. So if you're having an issue, that might be why. 
for now, this scene is done, but one thing, make sure to go to File, Build Settings. We need to add this scene to our Build Settings or else this next step that we're going to do won't work. So now the button knows what to do, but we still have to load this lose screen. We want that to happen when our player collides with the enemy. So we go to game level, because that's, make sure to save this, that's quite important. And then, so we have our enemy, and it's controlled by this enemy script. So if we go and open that, depending on how you structured your game, you might be checking the collision in your player script. In this case, we check the collision with the player in the enemy script. So in your player script, you might have one that's checking with the enemy or your enemy, in this case, checking with the player. And so here, all we have to do is load our lose screen. So the way I currently have the game right now, I'll show you, it simply reloads your start screen. And so that you can do, but it kind of, it doesn't really add that much to the game. So we can do that and I'll show that right now. So you'd start with this start screen and then you'd click start, you'd play, play your game. Let's say, oh no, I collided with an enemy and it'd reload this start screen again. But we're gonna change that. And again, um, important thing, make sure to include line four or else that's a really simple way that your game may not work. Then we're gonna include the name of our lose screen. So it's lose, what, what would we call it? Lose screen. Make sure to do it word for word, letter for letter. Again, there's no space over here, so there's not gonna be any space over here. And that's all we have to do. So now when we start, we can start our game. We play, we play, we play, we collide with the enemy. Oh no, game over. We can try again and we reload the scene again. If you want, you can again reload the start scene. That's truly up to you. But that's really just a simple way to get uh, a lose screen. And you can again, customize this as much you want. You can change colors, you can add photos, you can do um, whatever you want. This is one way to really enhance your game. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you can implement this lose screen into your own game.